wetlands are important when we talk about climate change because first, uh, it's through water that we feel uh, the consequences, immediate consequences of climate change. Uh, through drought on one side, no water, uh, through flood on the other side. Uh, and when we manage wetlands, we can manage those two events. Uh, so managing wetlands contribute uh, to also adaptation to climate change. Uh, but also uh, climate change has an impact on wetlands. It impacts wetlands uh, and it reduces the re resilience of some type of wetlands. So we need uh, also to address this. And some other wetlands uh, can serve as mitigation tools. Uh, if you take, for instance, what we call peatlands, it's a type of wetland that has stored carbon for, uh, for hundreds of years, uh, thousands of years, uh, and this carbon is blocked there. When you drain this area, when you degrade the area, you release the carbon, a lot of carbon. And this contributes to global warming, so this contributes to accelerating climate change. So we need to be aware of it uh, to make sure that we are managing peatlands carefully so that we can make sure they contribute to continue storing uh, carbon. Uh, and the other side, uh, when you look at uh, the other type of wetlands, coastal and marine wetlands, especially mangrove, seagrass meadows, uh, uh, coral reef, and salt marshes, all of them store a lot of carbon into the soil and they block it. Some of them have blocked uh, carbon there for thousands of years. And today, we are losing many of them. And uh, uh, some study has shown that about 20 to 30% uh, of mangrove area, salt marshes and meadows, uh, and, and, and seagrass meadows have been lost. And they continue to be, to be lost just because people do not understand the value of them in terms of uh, carbon storage. Those are very important carbon storage. And there is a, today a study from the World Bank uh, revealing the importance of those areas, coastal wetlands. Uh, and uh, uh, fortunately, the UNFCCC has also recognized uh, uh, under the uh, drainage and reweighting uh, of wetlands uh, that this is also to be considered because uh, when we degrade wetlands, we also contribute not only to uh, emission of CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, but also methane and nitrous oxide, which are even uh, more uh, uh, important in terms of emission uh, of carbon mm -hmm. than uh, CO2. Uh, so this contributes to the nitrogen cycle and denitrification of wetlands contribute to emission of a lot of carbon. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that and we need to make sure that we are not uh, draining those areas, we are not degrading those areas, we are maintaining them, uh, maintaining the health of those areas. Uh, so we are contributing to storing a lot of carbon, contributing to mitigation mm -hmm. of, of climate change. Uh, and uh, when we use them properly, not only we mitigate climate change, but we increase the possibility for fisheries, okay. for food security, yep. for poverty reduction. Mm -hmm. And those areas are also good uh, for tourism. When they are healthy, mm -hmm. when they are degraded, they are no longer good for tourism. So it's important to understand that they contribute uh, uh, for food security, for even energy production, uh, and they contribute for climate change adaptation and mitigation, uh, and they can also contribute to poverty reduction. So the role of wetland for sustainable development, each type of wetland has its value. And we need to understand uh, that we have wetlands from the mountain to the sea. Mm -hmm. Each landscape has its type of wetland. All of them contribute. And many of them are very linked to forest area. We need forest, but we need also wetland to sustain forest. Mm -hmm. So the interdependency between forest, uh, wetland, agriculture, mm -hmm. because we need also water for agriculture, energy production, uh, all of that we need to understand. And we need to understand the connectivity between land and sea. Mm -hmm. Now we recognize that land use system are driver 
of climate change in terms of uh, degradation. But we have not, we have not enough recognized mm -hmm. that also some ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, like wetlands are asset uh, for reducing emission, mm -hmm. asset for storing carbon. And this is happening today. And we are happy to see that uh, under the CDM, the Clean Development Mechanism, mm -hmm. the UNFCCC have recognized a methodology we have proposed uh, for reforestation and afforestation of ti tidal marshes, including mangrove. And this is an opportunity uh, for even private sector to use the methodology to get carbon credit. Mm -hmm. So we are happy to see that the scientific community is working to improve the knowledge about the role of wetland for climate change.